Here we go again, Celebrity MasterChef, the toughest cookery competition on television. The cooking hasn't started yet, so I'm feeling just fine. They may be famous in their own world, but now they've got to prove how good they are in the kitchen. I'm so scared, I can't tell you. I've always fancied myself cooking. I'm having second thoughts now. <laughs> We've got singers, actors, dancers, but as long as they can cook better than I could dance, we'll be fine. These five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best cooks will make it through. I think anxious is probably the best way to describe it. Excited, anxious, nervous. <laughs> what have I let myself in for? Cooking with a time limit, the pressure of that, I, I think I'm going to struggle with. You've got an hour, a sign from now, and then, you know, OK, plate up, plate up. That, uh, that could be a bit scary. When you're watching things like that, you go, oh, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. But when it comes to actually doing it, it's going to be a different ball game. It's all right to cook when there's no one watching you, but my gosh, to think that everyone's watching you cook, it's just, oh, thought. Welcome to MasterChef. We know who you are. But can you cook? This is a wonderful opportunity to show everybody that you have some cookery talent. This your first task is a MasterChef invention test. Ooh. The celebrities have been given cod, chorizo, fennel, sweet potato, ginger, spinach, tomatoes, peppers, rice, and rhubarb. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour. Let's cook. We have to use all the ingredients. That's what no, I'm going to say. Turn it in. That's a tall order. Right out loud. <laughs> Actor Amanda Donahoe takes her cooking influences from her travels around the globe. I'm good at thinking on my feet because I've had to learn that skill as an actor. And as a cook too, so yeah, fairly enterprising in that direction. <laughs> what are you going to make for us? Salmon on a bed of onions with garlic and a little ginger and what do you call them? Uh, potato we wedges. We wedges. What colour is salmon? That's not salmon, is it? What colour is salmon? It's pink. Yes. That is, I don't know what that fish That's was. That's a cod. Ah, it's cod, even better. It'll taste delicious. <laughs> Trust me. It's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> Potatoes, wedges, take about 35, maybe 40 minutes. A piece of fish takes about 10. They're both in the oven at the same time. Oh, steamed up glasses. You've had 15 minutes. For those of you old enough, that's a quarter of an hour. Former pop idol singer and TV presenter Sam Nixon spent a year at Catering College as a teenager. Sam's got a decent idea. A piece of cod, baked fennel, olives and tomatoes. And then he's going to throw some sweet potato on it. The sweet potato is a foreigner in an otherwise very, very comfortable dish. It's actually what I wanted to, to do as a profession. I thought I wanted to try and become a chef. And um, as that sort of was about to st start happening, I auditioned for Pop Idol at the same time and kind of moved to London and everything sort of changed, really. How about MasterChef? How do you feel about that? I'm nervous, I'll, I'll not lie, because I, I do fancy myself as a little bit of a cook, so I, I would like to do well in this competition, I must admit. If you do progress, Sam, yep. will you be able to comb your hair properly? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
25 minutes have gone. Singer and presenter Misha Paris lives in London and is a keen home cook. The stuff I cook is, you know, it works and it, everyone loves it. But I want to have new things. I want to learn new dishes, you know. I'm just tired of my own stuff. I'm sick of me, you know. It's like, not that again, Paris, you know. What are you cooking? Um, I'm going to pan fry the cod. Yeah, I'm going to probably put that on top of the rice and then I'm going to do a little sauce and then I'm going to make some spinach. And only the Lord knows if that's going to come out good. Let me just tell you, I'm Mate, terrified. You sound like you cook to me. Yeah, I cook every day at home, but in the Caribbean, you know, Jamaican families, it's like that. You have to cook, it's standard. Men cook, everybody cooks. You know, in my family, they tell you when you're rubbish. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Olympic gold medalist Danny Crates used to cook as a teenager if his mum was late home from work. The only issue I've got is only having one hand, so I, I, I can't always do, sometimes when you need to be doing two things at once, I'm, I'm kind of scuppered by it. The only plus that I've got from all the other, I guess, as we'd be called novice cooks in here, is there's less chance of me cutting myself with a knife than anybody else. He says. <laughs> How are you feeling now on here? I'm, I'm, I'm glad now I've got it in the oven. I don't know what it's going to come out like. Um, what is it, Danny? What I've put in there? Yeah. I, I can never pronounce the dishes I cook. The one where you cook it in a bag. Oh, papillot. Papillot, that's the one. So I'm going to cook it in like, a bit mm. of cod in the bag. Where did you learn that? My aunt used to have a bistro. Um, I'm quite journalistic anyway, so I, I, I always ask questions. So. Um, How fast do you learn? How fast do you pick things up? Oh, really slow. Yeah, really so. Well, no, I'll pick them up really quick. I just can't keep them there. <laughs> Brilliant. Paper bag, cooking a piece of fish, Spanish flavours, onions, peppers, chorizo sausage, fantastic. The issue that Danny's got right now is he can't see inside that bag. So he's got the timing right. It's going to be delicious. I forgot to check the time when it went in. You've got 15 minutes left. And using an old-fashioned watch as well. <laughs> Comedian Sid Little lives in Blackpool and plans to celebrate his 40th wedding anniversary by making his wife a curry. I like wholesome stuff. I don't like this classy stuff that costs you a fortune and you get about three mouthfuls out of it. I don't like that. <laughs> Nouveau cuisine is not on my dish. No. Sid? That's me. All right, mate. You seem very, very much in control. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I'm not. The thing is, you said keep it simple, and you can't get simpler than fish and chips, can you? How much cooking do you do? Not a lot, because my wife's a good cook, and um, you know, but she's taught me a lot. I've stood there watching her. Looking forward to the fish and chips. Oh dear, <laughs> no pressure. If you drop it in, it will stick to the basket. Right. Okay. So you wave it into it. That's it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yippee! I love fish and chips as long as the batter's crispy and the fish is lovely and flaky on the inside. As long as those chips are crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside, it's going to be brilliant. Eight minutes left. It's not as good as Addick, is it? Addick oh, and chips. Go, Sid. <laughs> I don't want too much spice. I want flavour. I'm not about the pepper, pepper, pepper. Get me cod skin to crisp. Apart from that, it's not going swimming you well. Final touches. Right, that's it. Time's up. You have to stop. You're right, Sam. Sorry. What is it about stop you don't get? Well done, everybody. It was cool. Oh, I'm smoking. I don't know, though, mate. It's just kind of like chucked in a bag and cooked. You know? <laughs> <laughs> First up is soul singer Misha, who's made cod with a tomato based sauce, garlic rice, and steamed spinach. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. it? Misha, I, I think you can cook. Oh, amen. 
I think you can cook. There's a nice flavour of garlic and onion. I mean, balanced really well. Flaky cod, rice is loose and light, not waterlogged. That's good. May, I'm really happy. Thank you. It's a really good invention test. Thank you. I'm really impressed. Oh, I'm so happy, really. That's a really good start. When they said they liked it, I, I swear, I think, I don't know what happened. Everything was going off inside of me. It was going, psh, fireworks. It was New Year's Eve, you know, it was all that. Amanda has chosen to accompany her baked cod with potato wedges, spinach, tomatoes, and garlic and ginger. The skin on that cod needs to come off. The fish is a bit dry and overcooked. Your potatoes are hard on the outside and collapsing in the middle and almost sort of cardboard in texture because there's been no oil on them. They've gone in dry. Yes. Um, it's just a bit overdone. I like the idea of using ginger and garlic, but that's far too powerful. Is it? Okay. If you chomp on that, that is going to set your mouth on fire. Right. I can't wait to do something else, because I don't feel that was terribly representative. Presenter Sam's roast cod has been served with fennel baked in white wine, roasted tomatoes, olives, chorizo, and a sweet potato mash. My big issue is the fish. Uh, it's a lovely piece of cod. It, you need to cook it for half the amount of time. And it should fall apart naturally at the seams. Okay. The, the sweet potato doesn't belong there, but that's a good sweet potato mash. Yeah, thanks. The tomato and the olives and the fennel was a brilliant, brilliant idea. The seasoning on your fish is also good. We've picked up on some issues, but I think you've got the makings of a good cook. Thank you. Cheers. Your air's too scruffy. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> I was hoping that they'd see that I can actually cook a little bit. So they did see that, which is good. Um, so that was nice. It's frustrating, because I should have I should have got rid of the mash, because I, I did see him like, pull his nose up when I said that. But no, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Could have been worse. So. Paralympian Danny has served his cod on papillot. You actually don't know whether that's cooked properly yet, do you? Not massively. That's my first concern. Ooh, mm -hmm. looks cooked to me. Let's get in there. The skin needs to come off of this, all right? The parcel is also filled with chorizo, potatoes, peppers, onions and garlic. Mate, that really, really works for me. You've got the chorizo spilling out all that lovely paprika flavour into that juice as well. Your tomatoes are cooked. You've got sweetness of tomatoes and onions in there. And your fish is flaking. That's perfect. I really like what you've done, Danny. I really like it. And you're clever enough, though, to cook everything first before it went in. Many people make the mistake of putting lots of raw things in the paper and then trying to cook the fish. Good job. Yeah. Really good job. Don't let it go to your head. No, that's it. I'm done now. I've peaked. <laughs> they seemed happy. A few things I need to learn, but I guess that's why I'm here. So, first bit done. Finally, it's comedian Sid, who's made battered cod and chips with a tomato and lettuce salad. I've got fish and chips, Sid, <laughs> and it's very nice indeed. Oh, wow. Very, very nice indeed. Your batter's really light. Your fish is cooked really, really well. Your chips are good. They're soft in the middle, they're cooked. I'm happy. What's your wife's name? Cherie. You can tell Cherie all that time you spent watching her cook hasn't been wasted. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I think it's a great statement. It's a very, very bold statement. And if you can cook good food like this, you're going to go a long way in this competition. Wow. What can one say? In a sort of sadistic sort of way, I've enjoyed it, but uh, I keep thinking at 72, why have I put myself through all this? <laughs> well done, babe. That was wicked, oh, man. That was wicked. Well, yeah. That was wicked. Yeah. That was great, man. Nice. Oh,
Oh, it's nice. Guys, well done. As MasterChef goes, that's a pretty good start. Your next task, you're going to have to work really hard because you're off to a professional kitchen. <sighs> good luck. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon. It's day two, and the five celebrities have been split into two teams. But what happens if it's a total disaster? Well, what do they do? Comedian Sid and presenter Sam are in Covel Garden, heading to Cicchetti, which takes its name from Italian tapa-style dishes traditionally served in Venice. Look at us. Oh, we're, we're dressed for <laughs> this it, This doesn't we? look good, does it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit more, it's a bit yeah, more real, this now, isn't it? Go blimey. Service will be run by renowned Italian chef Aldo Zilli. Hey, buongiorno. Welcome to Cicchetti restaurant. You are my chefs for the day. Oh. So I wish you the best of luck. And I hope we don't but let you down. Yeah, 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 definitely not. Well, I hope you don't let me down. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. OK, Sam, the dish you're going to be doing is uh, grigliata mista. Okay. Sounds really good, doesn't it? Does it does sound great. In Italian. Yeah. Yeah. All it is is a mixed grill. Right. <laughs> okay, right, okay. The sharing platter includes sirloin steak, Luganaga sausage and lamb, served with char-grilled courgette, artichoke and a garlic mayonnaise. It takes Looks no great. time. Just watch that you don't overcook the beef. Yeah. Watch that you let it rest. Yeah. And watch that you dress everything that's on that plate like I did. Yeah. Ciao. The thing is, because we, we're doing tapas, it's, we're not just like cooking one dish and concentrating on that. It's like a bunch of different things. So sort of the timing aspect of it all, that's, that's the worrying bit. And this grill is roasting hot, so I've got to keep my eye on it. So I'm a, the main thing I'm worried about is if I get a few orders on at the same time. But I don't know, I hope I don't lose it and, uh, and basically mess it all up. Sid is in charge of the fish soup, which includes seven types of seafood, purple potatoes, cherry tomatoes, fennel and celery. No panic. Just watch me yeah. once and then you can follow. <laughs> so we start with the potato with a little bit of celery. Chop some fennel very thinly. That goes in. Right, so this is your fish, it goes in. With the skin on and everything. Skin on and everything, yeah. yeah. And that will stay nice and together. Yeah. You know, We've got sea bass in there and we've got red mallet. Sea bass and, and red, red mallet. mallet. We're going to put the squid in now. Yeah. How much is that going to make? This is for one person. Oh, right. OK, the trick here is to be very, very careful when you turn this. Turn it once and leave it. You don't want it to break. So now we're going to add a prawn, and then finally, mussels and clams, OK? If you hear a hollow sound, that means one of them is full of sand or empty, OK? And then the scallop, finally, just one per person. Takes a couple of minutes to cook, and then you place it on top when you serve it. And the, the shellfish are opening up, aren't they? Yeah, as soon as it's all open, it's yeah. ready. Oh. Sid, this is your dish. Wow. Would you be proud of that? Yes, if I got like, like that. Yeah. Well, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, how many times have you done that? <laughs> Once. This is no, my first time. <laughs> never, never. Don't believe it. That's so you've got no me. chance. <laughs> oh, don't good, leave me, Chef. Good luck, Sid. <laughs> See you later. You. Thank you. What do I do now? 
South of the river sits London's iconic Shard, home to the Shangri-La Hotel and its signature restaurant Ting, which delivers an Asian twist to British fare under the supervision of executive chef Simon Attridge. Danny is already prepping yellow, purple and white carrots, which will accompany a starter of hand-dived scallops, carrot and ginger puree, with a mandarin and yuzu dressing, lemon sorrel and viola flowers. So we cook them so they're just cooked in the middle, almost as if you're serving a medium piece of beef. Couple of the carrot balls. So although there's a lot of different, there's lots of different textures on here, there's not so many flavours. It's carrot in different ways, so we don't confuse the dish. It's a nice bit of the juice. Okay, then we finish it with lemon sorrel, some lemon balm, just before we send it. Just a little bit of the kaffir lime. Very simple. You, yeah, you made it look very simple. <laughs> It's a scallop some more, Skip, because I know people are very funny about scallops. Yeah, we need to make sure the scallops are cooked correctly. We definitely don't want anything being sent back today. You've got a one-armed novice chef in your restaurant. You'll what could possibly go wrong for you? <laughs> <laughs> Amanda is preparing julienne of apple for a lamb main course. The loin of lamb is glazed in a soy, mirin and sake marinade and served with braised baby onions, erengi mushrooms, apple puree, mushroom marmalade, shiso cress, and a lamb sauce. Every technique must be mastered, including the perfect quenelle. Okay, so you move one spoon. So I take a scoop. Take a scoop, not too much. Not too much. Do it nice and slow. Now you did it. Yep. Oh, God, look how that is. Yeah, and now you do the reverse. Ooh, see, that is harder than it looks. A lot harder than it looks. Look, we're getting there already. This is a natural. But obviously, there's a little bit more pressure in service because there's lots of things going on. Lots. Misha is prepping pied bleu mushrooms for a main course of John Dory, which will be served with sweet potato fondant and puree, baby turnips, and a burnt butter, soy and lime foam. The, time, the timing for this dish is crucial right. because your fish has got to come down with the other main courses. Okay. So there will be other people cooking fish as well, so it's all going to be ready at the same time. I ain't mad at you. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, down to the pass. Oh, I like the way you do that. That's great. Two swipes. Yeah. Fish. All the garnish. Yep. Sweet potato fondant, sweet potato puree, sweet potato dice. Nice. So it's very important the croutons go last because if you leave them in the sauce, they're going to go soggy. Mix it around. Yeah. Over the top. Ooh. Oh, that looks great. And there you go. One John Dory, your responsibility lunchtime. Yeah, no pressure. Thank you so much. Perfect. Awesome. Mm. Really good with the croutons, you know when it starts to. Yeah, a little bit of crunch, eh? Yeah, the lime rocking, as well, so. rocking, rocking. Did you make that up? Yeah. Respect. Go there with your bad self. So I'm going to do the fish now. Across London, lunch service is beginning. In Covent Garden, Sam has his first mixed Italian grill orders. Woo! How's the meat going? I was a little bit worried about this bit. It started to. Uh... Sorry. No, that's not good. You can't serve that to my customers. Put another one in, yeah. Another one? Yeah. You gotta really watch that. Yeah. This grill is fiery. Yeah. You put too much oil on that. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Flying in, yeah, I've just had three in a row. Unfortunately, I messed up that one as well, so I've got to get it uh, I've got to get get it on again. Another one. Oh no, the sausage. Get take the sausage out, put it up there. Yep. Start again, start again. Okay, chef. You can't serve that either. Okay, chef. You've got to turn the meat before it gets to this point. Right, so three on. Three of those on. Right. Yeah, I'm really frustrated with myself that I've 
burnt the first bit of meat uh, because it's, you know, it's expensive, you know, it's really frustrating, but, you know, I've got to forget about it now and get my head back in the game. While Sam tries to get back on track, Sid is bringing together over 15 ingredients for his fish soup. Fish stock, fish, fish stock, fish stock. <laughs> Whoa! Can I see if you're right there? I, I, I think so, Chef. Uh, hey? Can I turn that off now because... That's very fierce there, my goodness oh, me. Sorry. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn it down, turn it down. Where's clams and mussels? Clams, 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 All mussels. Right. Time to put them in quickly. Otherwise the fish will oh, overcook wait a minute, and the wait mussels and clams won't open. Two, two each, Chef? Two each, yes. Make sure they're... Get uh... some clams. Yeah. Ah, sounds a bit hollow, that. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Put them in. Oh, uh, yeah. Put them in. Potatoes. Potatoes, Sprinkle last. a few potatoes on top there now. Yeah. Finish, yeah. That's it. Lovely. OK, now as soon as this the open. shellfish opens, you serve it. OK, Sid? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Sid, they want the fish, mate. Yeah, come in. Come on, lunch is kicking off. Can I have two slices of bread? Now, Chef. See, that looks good, man. Yeah? It looks good. If it tastes as good as it looks. It's, it's got a lot, it's got a kick to it. I didn't realise that. <laughs> Sid, they need seasoning. <laughs> Come on, Sid! I put some salt on it. Let's go, Sid. Go, go, go. It's okay. Oh, right. They can put they can always add, but they can't take, take it away. away, so it's fine. Good one. Go, go back to your station, mate. When an order comes in, you, you, your bottle goes. So uh, yeah, it's quite nervous and uh, I'm just uh, hope he doesn't shout any minute now another fish soup. Because I've just got all the get trying to get my nerves together over the first one. On the other side of the Thames, service is also in full swing. All right, guys, you got to listen now. We have a table of four, OK? Two scallop, one crab. Right, so three minutes on a scallop, Danny, yes, please. Yeah. Hey, yeah, quick, get hot, 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 hot. <laughs> how long? On these two scallops, how long? Two and a half minutes, Chef. Two and a half minutes, good. Danny, that's exactly what we're looking for. They nearly cut? Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Right, I reckon we're good to go on those. Right, Danny. No mess. No mess. Right, hold on. Let's start. Get one more plate. They need to be close together, yeah? OK, Chef. Just there, yeah? Oh, yes. OK, because we want to go puree in the middle and then scallop, scallop, yeah? OK. OK? Just use the scallop so you get a bit of height on the plate, yeah? Yes. Perfect. That's yes. enough for that one. Same table, yes? Yeah? So we're going to have the same, same amount of carrots same. on each. That's better. Calm down, yeah? Don't panic. It's all under control, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice and slow. Yes. Is that okay, Chef? Yeah. Very good. Very good, Danny. I'll take it back. It's not easy. Over on Mains. Misha and Amanda need to work together to deliver their John Dorian lamb at the same time. Guys, I'm not hearing anyone talking to each other. Yeah, I'm talking. How long? Uh, um, maybe two? Two and a half. Don't two. rush, yeah? Two and a half on the lamb, Amanda, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah? You're happy with that fish? It looks cooked from here. Yep, it's cooked. I don't like it. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it because it, it broke. So I'm unhappy about that. Amanda, use the knife to slice, yeah? Just pop it under the grill for one second. Otherwise, you're going to make the food cold, yeah? Right, Misha, we need the garnish, coming. please. Coming down to the pass, yeah? Yeah. Well, we're going to have lamb and no fish. Yes, I'm coming. Right, take that out. OK, come here, talk to me. Don't leave me now. Did I put that here? Oh. Give me another one, quick. Misha? I'm coming, Chef. Don't, give, don't worry, I'm coming. I love you. 
It's all happening. Ooh. Now just give it a second because we want to serve this pink, yeah? Okay, so I, shall I leave it under? No, no put it under there because it needs to be... Oh dear. oh dear. Um, what are we going to do about that? I don't know what happens We're going to use sir. one of these lamb, aren't we? But yes. don't forget, you need another lamb on. OK. I we do. need it very quickly, yeah? Yes, chef. We, you weren't thinking about giving that to them, were you? Of course not. Good. Are you paying for that one? God, uh, I guess it'll come out my wages, won't it? Luckily we had another one, huh? Oh, yes. Chef, is right, that, can we have the lamb, I'm worried that's not rare enough for you. No, that's okay. It's still it's lost its colour a bit, but it's still a bit it's a bit it's still soft, yeah? Okay, yes. It's not overcooked, okay? No, it's, it's just not. lost its colour a little bit, yeah? Alrighty. We need the mushroom marmalade. Mm, no, no, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's go. Can we try try and not sauce the whole plate, yeah? We need to we need to get the jus on the plate, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's OK. Lemon feeling? balm, I think we can improve on the next one, yeah? I know, I know. Otherwise, we're never going to survive lunch. Right, one lamb, one John Dory, guys. Three minutes from now, please. Well. Guys, Misha. Yes, Misha, sir. Amanda. Yes, yes, you need sir. to talk to each other more. Yes. OK? Calm down on the pass when you're sourcing. You've got to source the, f the food, not the whole plate, yeah? So just slow down a little bit, please. OK? He's very patient. I know if I was him, I would have killed me already. You know what I mean? The plating up is difficult because your hands are shaking so much. And it has to look good, you know. It has to look gorgeous on the plate. And that's hard. That is hard. But I'm having a laugh. <laughs> wow. She's having a laugh. Across the river. Sam is still trying to impress Aldo with a perfectly cooked mixed grill. It's pretty busy. Are we playing the line? Sam? Almost, chef. And I've just had another order as well, so I need to get on with that. Make sure that beef is rare, Sam. Uh, the sausage doesn't look cooked, Sam. OK. So let's try it, shall we? Give me a knife. Give me a knife! Go back, cook the sausage more. Come on, Sam! Nah. You can't give raw sausages to people or you'll kill them. Yes, it's all going downhill at the moment, everyone. He's got very high standards, but, um, you know... That's why he's uh, successful, so that's fair enough. Let's go with this meat. The meat's been waiting too long. Come on, Sam, we've got to go, man. Here we go, chef. Via le pappardelle qua. Thank you, Sam. Oh, man, this is what I want to see. The lamb looks really good. Sam, this is as good as mine. Thanks, chef. Cheers, man. Thank well you. done, boy. Cheers. You've improved in a flash. <laughs> Don't give up your day job just yet, then. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chef is also waiting for more of Sid's fish soup. You all right, mate? Yeah. Uh, you need a cuddle, that's what you need. Oh. Thanks, Chef. Sid, I feel, I feel bad that you're really hot. But I, don't, I don't like at the same, shouting at me, Chef. At the same time, I'm not shouting. At the same time, this is normal. This is nothing. This is scary, this Chef. This is nothing, mate. Yeah. This is, this is a kitchen. You're right there, Chef. All right, come on then. Let's go, let's go. Where's the, where's the scallops? Sid, what's this up here? I'm looking for scallops, yeah? Sid, here, look. Oh, sugar. Put the bread on and let's go. And give it to the pots, go on. To be fair, on a positive note, you know, we have given him the, the most difficult dish and uh, there's a lot of elements to that dish. Sid, this is looking better now. Thanks, Chef. Hey, what this have you done? I've done it all on are my own. Are you on uh, overdrive all of a sudden? Make it look pretty, Chef. Excellent. Thanks for seasoning. Ah! <laughs> I see! 
Well done, Sid! Thank you very much! Let's go, boys! Hang on, two pieces of bread, yeah? That was as good as mine. As good Not as quite. mine earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That went very well, that did. The chef liked it. I even got a kiss off him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've got a ready, a ready, I don't think I've got a steady job here, though. Not that I want one. <laughs> Back at the Shard, Danny's clearing the last few scallop orders. Danny, good colour on these scallops. They're very nice, yeah? Thanks, chef. Can you say it again a bit louder? <laughs> Danny, I've said it twice, yeah? <laughs> King of the scallops. It's good fun, actually. It's really good fun. Right, the last scallop, Danny. Let's make it look nice, please, yeah? Yes, Chef. Nice and together. Get the carrots at nice angles. Let's go, a nice bit of juice, Chef. Yeah? Yes, Chef. Let's go, last one, yeah? You put it on the tray. Come on. Danny, yeah. good job. Thank you very much. It's now down to Misha and Amanda to bring service to an end. Right, ladies, two lamb, three dory next check, please. Yes, Chef. Hello? Yes, Chef. Two lamb, three dory. Yes, Hello. Chef. Uh, uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half, Amanda, two yeah? Two minutes. We can't be two minutes if she said three and a half, yeah? See, look, stuff like this, yeah, look. You've got to put this sauce on. You want to keep it warm, but you don't want it to get burnt. You see what I mean? So you're, like, doing, like, four or five things at the same time. Plus, you're trying to look glamorous as well. <laughs> Very hard. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Foam up, foam up, foam up, foam up. Yes! It's working! It's great. OK, done. Now, back to the fish. Right, three plates, yeah? Yeah. Three purees. Let's go. Yeah. So I think you'd be trouble, huh? You think I'm trouble, don't yeah, you? I know you're sure. looking at me like that. I'm really <laughs> nice, honestly. I'm soft, I'm gentle. Nearly there. Okay, I've got my phone stuff. Is my phone bits there? I don't know, you better ask Oliver. Yeah. Oliver, Oliver you've got, got my the phone. phone. Oh, yeah, it's there. What well, should you be doing the phone? I am going to do it. I did come it. Come on, let's go. I swear I did it. Come I on, come on. I... Shush. Oh, oh. Foam okay. and lemon balm, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be cold by the time they get it. All right. Misha, good job. Oh, baby, respect. Come on, man, give me a hug. <laughs> bring it in, man, bring it in. Woo! Good job. Right, lamb, oh. sauce, let's go. Four dots. Four dots, coming dots, up. Dots, yeah, we've got sauce. Let's do your quenelles, yeah? Yes, sir. Should be very good at these quenelles by now. Look at that, eh? You taught me well. Very good quenelles, Amanda. Thank you, chef. Let's go on these, yeah? Yes, chef. Last table. Look at that. Oh, God. Right. Only taking me two hours. That's enough for that. Right, and that's the medium one. A little bit more gravy. There you right, go. Right, last table. Put it on the tray. Let's go. Come on. Whoa. Medium well. Thank you. Medium well. Amanda, good job. Last one. Well I done. Don't yeah. Know how you guys You're do a bit this hot there. every day? You're amazing. Thank good you. Job. Good job. Good job. Service may be over, but there's no let up for the celebrities. Welcome back. Now, I think it's a very important moment in your MasterChef competition because it's the first time you are going to cook your own food. Really important you deliver today. Because at the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, your own two courses, your food. One hour. Let's cook. What are you making, Misha? 
I'm making chicken curry, but it's like a, I call it curry fusion. It's a bit, it's a bit Thai vibe, but Jamaican vibe mixed in. But it's not hot because I don't like pepper. I'm not a pepper person. I like taste. It's all about taste with me. Do you want to smell? Like it? Mmm, mm, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That curry has to be full of flavour because she says she doesn't like pepper. So the seasoning she's got to use has got to be really, really vibrant. For dessert, she's got an apple tart. Loads of apples on a piece of puff pastry and she's swallowed the whole lot with apricot jam. Could be really, really lovely. I don't do dessert. I don't like dessert. I'm not a dessert person. I'm hoping that the food will be so good that they forget that, that, that you know, the dessert's there. <laughs> Sam's promising us a red Thai chicken curry. Red curries made with dried red chilies, not fresh ones. That's where the colour comes from. I'll be interested to see how Sam's comes out. For his dessert, an apple crumble tart. Apple crumble, I love. Apple tart, I love. And custard, if Sam delivers a good bowl of custard, I'll be happy. I want custard, the stuff that sticks to the inside of your ribs. The custard, see, I don't usually eat custard. I'm usually an ice cream or cream man. So custard is kind of a new thing. I've practised it. It's not easy. It's not, no. <laughs> yeah, I've, Not at all it's easy. It's not, so... Competition, do you want to stay in? Yeah, man, definitely. I enjoy cooking and I want to learn more for when I'm at home. And the longer I stay in this competition, the more I'm going to learn. So. Well, I enjoy your cooking and more importantly, your hair looks better. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. I borrowed your brush. <laughs> I'm semi-confident that I can pull it off. I don't want to be too confident because, uh, yeah, that apple tart is giving me nightmares at the minute. You're halfway. Halfway. Okay, let's be clear about this. I'm going to attempt to cook baked salmon with vegetable broth on udon noodles. Um, it's that slightly Asian styley. Followed by chocolate mousse with crushed nuts and possibly some fruit. That's an ongoing experiment, which will on be ongoing as I cook it. <laughs> but it should be tasty. You've got to make chocolate mousse. You've got to melt the chocolate. You've got to whip up your cream. You've got to make it really aerated. And then somehow you've got to make it set. With only half an hour to go, she hasn't even melted the chocolate. Are, are you finding the competition pressurised, or is it fun, or what is it? I'm dreaming. A night nightmares about food being chased and overcooking salmon and things and is that right? And then you start to question and doubt every ingredient, every method, everything. So it can, it does get a bit under your skin. Master Chef has started to creep into your everyday <laughs> life. Yes, I used to enjoy this show. <laughs> You've got 15 minutes left. <laughs> Are you up against it time-wise? Not a oh, while. Well, um, a little bit. What, what are you making for us now? Um, I'm hoping I'm going to do your herb crusted rack of lamb. If it's not if the herb crust doesn't stick, it's going to be a rack of lamb with a, with a leek crushed potato and some nice carrots and a little bit of red wine jus that's destroying itself. The lamb and the crust are going to be the, the scary, scary bits for me. When I first cut that lamb and hopefully I look at it and it's pink and the crust is where it's supposed to be and not on the floor, then I'll be a happy man. His main course is well underway, but his dessert at the moment in jeopardy of not being done. He's got himself an apple tart, and it could be a great, great thing. But for all the work that Danny's putting in, he's got to finish both dishes. I'm feeling determined because 
I'm sure all my friends and relations and hopefully some fans I've still got, you know, if I got through, they'd be, I'm sure there'd be some cheers going on <laughs> at home. And that'd be nice to think of, yeah, something like that. What are you making? It's a ruby muddy. A curry? A curry, yeah. A chicken curry? Chicken curry with uh, turmeric, all the three ingredients. Because uh, I've not cheated like they do in some places and put a, t a tin in and that's it. So. What are you serving it with? Rice and um, poppadom and uh, onions. And uh, you make it a pudding? It's a banana. And then uh, warm it up, get it nice and soft and stick uh, brown sugar and, and uh, cream. What, what are you doing with the ketchup? It's a secret. It's gone in the curry, has it? No, no, not in the curry. It's going to go in the banana? No, no, no. No, no. In the onions? Yeah. Every good cook knows that every Indian kitchen uses tomato sauce. Of course they do. They use everything. Not. You have got just five minutes left. I'm in the thick of it. <laughs> drop it, don't drop it. Come on, guys, finish off. That's it, stop. Time's up. That's what I'm worried about, brother. Oh, it Look at him, man. You've got it to stick on. Well welded it. <laughs> welded it on. Danny, could you bring up your lamb, please? To stay in the competition, Danny has made rosemary and thyme crusted lamb with crushed potatoes with leek, chantonnay carrots, and a red wine sauce. There, Danny. That's very good indeed. Perfectly pink. Your crust has a lovely tang to it. Really herby and it complements the lamb beautifully. I love the crispness of it. It's really lovely and crunchy. Gets a softness of the lamb. The potatoes with the leeks, I'd like the leeks to be a bit more buttery. As for the rest of it, a really accomplished dish. I'm really impressed. Really impressed. That's good. That's very good, mate. You should be very pleased with yourself. Mm. This, however, leaves a little bit to be desired. Danny's dessert is an apple tart with crushed almonds and Chantilly cream. There's nothing wrong with your palate. Your, your, your combination of flavours is bang on. However, the pastry needs a little more cooking. The apples need to be a little bit softer. Your rushing today yeah. shows new dessert. It just needs a bit of finesse. I let myself down with the, the dessert, but that was always going to be... I, I've got no finesse. I've got, I've got no artistic skills whatsoever. But I guess that's something I can work on. Sid's main course is chicken curry with pilau rice, poppadoms, and an onion and tomato sauce salsa. <laughs> wow, Sid, you've packed a few of those bad boy chilies in there, mate, didn't you? Hey. They like it hot in Lancashire. Love your poppadoms, love the flavour in your curry. It starts off sweet, it goes slightly bitter and it comes back and hits you with heat. Beautiful flavouring in there and the chicken's well cooked. I agree with Greg and I like the curry itself. The onions, not for me, I'm sorry. Tomato ketchup and raw onion, no, nah. no. Nah. Sid's dessert is a baked banana in a coffee rum liqueur served with whipped cream. Whoa. I've got the sweetness, I've got the cream, I've got the coffee flavour, I've got the heat of the booze. I think that's very nice. It's, it's a tasty thing, but a baked banana in texture is soft, a bit mushy. I'm not a big fan of mush. 
the banana, well, banana is what it is really. It, it was stodgy, I suppose. Amanda's salmon has been baked in a broth with green beans, fennel, onion, garlic and chilli and served over udon noodles. Your fish is cooked nicely on top. Um, I like the noodles swimming around, but for me it needs to be more vibrant and a bit bolder. But you can add things, more ginger, more chilies, more lemongrass, anything like that which should just make it a big, richer stock. That's not bad for a home supper, but if we're going to move it onto MasterChef, we're going to have to sex it up a little bit. For dessert, Amanda has made a chocolate mousse with blueberries and macadamia nuts. A mousse to me is a light, fluffy bit yeah. of wonderment, and this is not. This... Maybe it was in the fridge a little longer than it should have been. And when I crunch on a blueberry, the juice of the blueberry then washes in my mouth. So I've got this sort of liquid, cheesy, chocolatey, nutty thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not my thing at all, I'm sorry to say. Have you played it a bit safe here, Amanda, do you think? Yeah, I guess I have. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Indeed. Thank you. <laughs> you like it? I'm Good. afraid so. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Come over here. Sorry. <laughs> Sam used fresh chilies to make his Thai red chicken curry, which he served with coconut rice. It's missing one thing for me, and you know what I'm going to say, mate, yeah. don't you? It's missing heat. Yeah. It's, it's missing chilli. Yeah. However, that's not a bad effort at all. I'm not a fan, Sam. No? Red curry is smoky and woody and really, really, really hot and lots and lots of sauce. It's not a Thai red curry. Right. That's my issue. Yep. Sam's apple crumble tart has been served with vanilla custard. Your pastry is cooked and it's falling apart in my mouth. I've then got lovely stewed sweetened apples and I've got the taste of almost burnt sugar across the top of the crumble. Well done, well done. <laughs> I'm frightened for you. <laughs> I'm frightened for you. Go on. I love it. I want custard that sticks to your ribs. This is good. Really very, very good indeed. Cheers, lads. Well done, babes. I'm a bit worried, man. <laughs> nice one, man. <laughs> yeah, well done, Sam. Stunning, bro. Oh, cheers, man. Thanks. Misha, your turn, please. I'm scared I'm going to drop it. <laughs> Misha used madras powder and coconut for her chicken curry, which is accompanied by jasmine rice and a cucumber writer. Your chicken is beautifully moist and I like the thick coating around it and also I love that flavour of saffron that's coming through. I think you've spiced it very, very well indeed. I don't see the point of a yoghurt writer if I haven't got heat. I like it with the sourness of the yoghurt because I get a sour background to it along with that smokiness of all the spices. Misha's dessert is an apple tart served with pouring cream. Help. Apples and apricot jam cooked together, really lovely. But the pastry's not cooked, mm. and we've got some runny cream on the side. You obviously need to work at desserts. Yeah, big time. If you want to go through the competition, you're going you're gonna to have to get some basic technique. I'm quite sad that it wasn't cooked. But I was so worried about the time and everything else, you kind of just get like, <clears throat> But I'm really glad they liked my main dish, which was really good. 
At least I've got something, right? We need to make a decision on who stays and who goes. Thank you very much. Off you go. Tough one today because nobody, absolutely nobody, nailed two amazing courses. And for me, the people that deserve to go through are the ones that pushed themselves the hardest and showed a bit of ambition. I think my lamb dish is strong enough to get me through today um, because they know how much work went into it. I think I've done well uh, up to now and uh, just see how it goes. It's all down to this idea of refining it to restaurant standard. And I don't know if that's something I'm very good at. John wasn't particularly happy with my curry, so I'm not sure how that's gonna, gonna stand for me. I've always believed that I should trust my instincts because my instincts were do not do it hard. That was my instincts from day one. It's been a good day, a really good day. Some great food, which has made our decision really tough. The contestant leaving us is... Amanda. Amanda, thank you. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. I'm relieved. It's not going to get easier, it's going to get harder. And they have the ambition, and that's why they deserve to go through. I'm really relieved. I can't tell you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm quite pleased about all that, but I've got to go through it all again, and I don't know if I can. I'm getting too old for this. Next time. I'm loving it. The four celebrities have to work in teams. Come on! <laughs> Shall I go and wash up now, Misha? It's been long. How are you doing, Sid? Not so bad! What? Anyone that you? Love your music. Bless I'm you. I'm sure I'm going to love your food. Thank you, darling. Before cooking their best two courses... Go! ...to stay in the competition. Wow! All I need now is a pint of proper ale, and I'm an happy boy.